Guys, I want to introduce you to my dear friend Lucky. Uh, he comes from a game development company. Uh, Lucky, can you introduce yourself briefly and tell us what is your company? Just simply to somebody who's hearing first time about your company, what your company does and uh, what you do in the company. Sure. Uh, my name is Lucky, last name Chow. I'm actually from uh, Canada, mm -hmm. uh, but Chinese origin. My parents are uh, initially from China, Guangdong province actually. So I, I can speak Cantonese uh, and I did learn Mandarin, like yeah. probably yourself. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. So, uh, and uh, again, I'm in a game development company. Not, a, not the major ones, not, mm -hmm. not a, too small either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're about 200 people mm -hmm. um, and uh, what's the name of the company it's called uh, well for short it's called Yoshiku 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 which means game valley retail uh, literary mm -hmm. uh, but the long name you know every mm -hmm. Chinese company yeah, it's uh, Beijing Mayogu which is okay. Beijing Mayogu information technology mm -hmm. company and, is there um, any international name or something in English somebody can, can check online or read about the company? Actually, our website is uh, www.yoshiku. Mm -hmm. like We're going to put the link. We're going to put the link so everybody can yeah. check out. Uh, and, uh, but no, as far as we, I know, uh, I've been with the company for three years now. Um, no, we don't have any... Uh, no English. So you were just English. basically focused domestically on the domestic market. Yes. That's actually you're right. Uh, good guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why uh, that's why we didn't like choose any like really English names. If we did, then maybe uh, we would have gone that route of publishing the games ourselves. But up to this point, uh, we're still mainly focused on uh, on game development and then partnering with domestic publishers or, or overseas, overseas publishers, publishers for the games yeah so can you can you briefly tell us uh, what are the some of the uh, best games you guys have, have mm -hmm. made so far what what are the capturing titles maybe in China and outside of China as well I would say we're well known in the industry uh, domestically mm -hmm. but uh, overseas I don't think we had uh, major hits yet hopefully in the future uh the first one major first major hit that we had was uh uh it's called Qi Xiong Zhong Ba in Chinese. Mm -hmm. It's uh it's a browser game mm -hmm. back in uh back in uh, two thousand nine. Oh. About ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And the game is actually still online. Well, it's still <laughs> running. Do you have active players? <laughs> yes, we do. That's why it's still operating. Um, browser game, and uh, that's the first, not first game, but the major hit that we had, and it was in partnership with Tencent. Okay, back then. Cool, cool, cool. That's uh, so uh, lucky. Can you tell us how did you end up in game industry? Uh, when did, did, you, did you play games when you were? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So uh, as tell, give, give us give us your roadmap. How did you end up in gaming industry and gaming? Uh, first of all, I think like anyone uh, during like young age and uh, overseas, right? We played console. My first console was actually uh, or handheld actually was uh, Game Boy. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, but console before the Game Boy, there was the first Nintendo. Okay. Yeah, so I played Super Mario on that. That was my yeah, first nice. experience of video games. And then uh, I did get the Wii as well. I played oh. PS, PlayStation for yeah, the first yeah, one, yeah. right? So How about I, Sega? I, that's how you want Sega, to... I played Mega Drive. Mega Drive, okay. Yes. Okay. Didn't, get, didn't play uh, Saturn mm -hmm. or what's Dreamcast, right? I didn't play those, but uh, yeah, Mega Drive, I did play that one. Uh, and then Xbox. Uh, a little bit and then uh, now it's mostly mobile phones mm. that's why I mean uh, many our company for example many focuses on mobile games now like it before they did have browser games actually that's their, that was what made them successful at the beginning but as you as you know like the market change so the shift the focus of every game companies is kind of now towards, towards mobile. mobile yeah so when did you 
uh, everybody used to play uh, games when they were uh, younger than childhood. But well, how did you get your first job in the gaming industry? Did you did you know somewhere that you want to work in gaming industry or? Uh, yes, I uh, kind of. It was kind of related. Before this company, I was working in an arcade machine uh, okay. developer. <laughs> okay. Uh, so those big ones, like you play mm -hmm. in the uh, uh, game centers, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Those ones. Uh, from there, yeah. I got to know some people in the. Mm -hmm. Also, it's part of gaming, right? It's yes. entertainment, gaming, right? It's just that that one is like stationary, a big machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, still, they develop games, uh, and uh, and then they had a very successful one. Uh, like I, I had some colleagues working for a project. That company, like for making the arcades, also had a project for making mobile games. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the the kind of uh, there was a time that was very popular in China, mm -hmm. the the fishing game. Kind fishing of. game. Yes. So you you shoot missiles or nets to the fish, right? <laughs> And to the pond, like it's kind of like a virtual pond, and uh, you shoot nets and whatever, and to catch fish, yeah. and that was really hard. And uh, and they they migrated that game from arcade to to mobile. Okay, cool. And it's been, uh, I think they they got a partnership with Tencent and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And this company that I'm currently working with is also a long partner mm -hmm. with Tencent. Okay. So okay. in China, as you know. Uh, Tencent is kind of not just traffic, it's yes. the biggest publisher. Uh, actually, not in China only, it's yeah, also yeah. in the world, right? Like Globally, global games, yes. Yes, yes. So, when you when you joined the, the mobile uh, game company, you mm -hmm. already had some previous experience working with the, mm -hmm. the in the entertainment gaming space. Yes. Uh, was the shift towards mobile uh, hard? Did, the, did you kind of have idea what you want to do, what you want to work? Um, how, how did you... The reason why I'm asking you this is many people are probably trying to get inside the game industry. Mm -hmm. They're trying maybe for the first time to apply for a job or they're trying mm -hmm. in many ways to, to get opportunity to work. Maybe if you have some insightful idea, something to share with them or give a suggestion, like how would they be go about to, to get to a gaming industry job? Mm -hmm. Well... If I recall correctly, uh, when I first met my my current mm -hmm. boss, the head of the company, uh, he actually asked me an interesting question. Uh, it was, "Do you play games? Mm -hmm. Do you love games?" Mm -hmm. I was like, "Yes, I do." Um, well, I don't have that much time. This is <laughs> I work compared to when I was at school, right? Mm -hmm. But of course, I, I, I love games and I'm not sure if I know how to make a game, mm -hmm. but I do like games, right? So, so it, it impacted me. I, I, I remember now why, the reason why um, you asked me is because really you need to be passionate about this to be able to work well. Uh, like even nowadays, like I still have to, like I didn't finish like mm -hmm. earlier, but the introduction, like my role right now is... Uh, um, I report to the COO, mm -hmm. uh, Chief Operating Officer, I'm, uh, um, her assistant. Mm -hmm. So uh, I help her in her uh, like operations, like because she she looks after like all the uh, games operations in China, and also uh, more like on the strategic side, like she would like look at different like projects submitted by different teams mm -hmm. for like future future games to be made, right? So strategy-wise as well, like she does that. So I'm kind of assisting her on that. So I also do like test test games, look at different games. And that's uh, that's different from uh, playing a game actually. <laughs> because uh, when you have to test a game, you have to really like think about, oh, what are the different systems that are made in the game, the different events that they use, right, mm -hmm. to, uh, to st stimulate the uh, the spending, mm -hmm. for example. But when I play, I don't think about all of those, right? It's just mm -hmm. for fun. Yes. I think about fun, fun factor, how, yeah. how fun it is, right? Yeah. But if I really have to know, if we th if I think about all oh, the game, we may have to make this kind of game, then really I have to dive deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so first day, how do they, how do the developers or the publishers 
make you uh, retain, right? What's interesting? What are user the retention. Yeah, what is the key factor for user retention? Exactly. What are the key factors for user retention? What are the new? Uh, what is the the pace that you have to like open up, unlock new systems so mm -hmm. that you keep the player interested, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I learned like uh, only last year when I was involved with one project. We had a project and we had uh, uh, three different games that we were kind of like referring to, right? Mm -hmm. Let's refer to this one and make it similar to mm -hmm. that and also this one. So three different games. Oh, so I was responsible for one, one of them mm -hmm. and had to play like about two or three weeks like kept, kept playing kept playing and have like create new accounts and because when you have to really <laughs> learn about all the details of the games uh, it's not just one time like you, you you find out everything you have to i have to keep like okay i played twice with this account so i have to log in for i have to create another account mm -hmm. and then find out other things like uh, stuff that i didn't buy for example what how would that affect mm -hmm. The game overall user overall, experience yeah the experience right if i'm a well user like how much how would it how are the things what are the things that would be unlocked like mm -hmm. uh fast right mm -hmm. and the other thing if i was a low spender mm -hmm. right then what are the things like what, what would be my experience so all the things that are really very complicated i find mm -hmm. in uh, uh depending on the kind of games of course if mm -hmm. it's casual then yeah so, but, but for us, it was an RPG. Mm -hmm. <laughs> RPG, uh, not an MMORPG, mm -hmm. but it was uh, still RPG plus uh, card collection. Mm -hmm. So you collect stuff and you upgrade. So all the RPG concept, right? All the, all the RPG mechanisms and stuff like that. So that, those were the things that really I had to mm -hmm. study, really study and analyze and then build a report and mm. give it to my colleagues. And the, the, what is your, uh, for mm -hmm. example, <clears throat> now if you are starting to build a new game, for example, mm -hmm. walk us through the process of like, what are some of the steps mm -hmm. you need to do from the moment you say, okay, I like this type of game, I would like to build one of the, this kind of games with your own design. What are the processes in terms of designer, uh, developer, engineer, sound, uh, overall strategy, level, difficulty. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some from your perspective, from your experience, how that worked for you guys? And uh, uh, I can say it would be very broad surface. I mean, surface level. Mm -hmm. I, I can't like go into details because I'm not. Um, I didn't study that. My mm -hmm. background was uh, actually electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Not sure how I ended but up from, here, but from 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 but your perspective, exactly. So from what I did recently, I did go through um, a game. Uh, actually, not a game. Uh, five games, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm making I have made a report, mm -hmm. uh, looking at various aspects of the games. Right, the graphics, mm -hmm. UI, right, user experience, and then uh, compared about also uh, how they. Uh, you know the versions uh, updates, mm -hmm. yeah. The games the versions updates. What are the new features that they add over time, mm -hmm. right? And how that affected their mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. on the on the grossing chart or yes. downloads, right? Yes, yes, yes. So I can kind of find out. Oh, this is something that is variable and that mm -hmm. I think we should have, right? If we were to make this kind of game. So those are the stuff that I think uh, I captured. And uh, next is uh, monetization. Mm -hmm. Monetization: how to make how the games make money. What other stuff that they sell uh, in game currency, for example, or ads, mm -hmm. things like that. And then next step is uh, and next step is we have to think about the uh, acquisition, cost mm -hmm. of acquisition, user acquisition, right? So uh, those are the things that I kind of try to find. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll give one com comparison to mm -hmm. uh, what we did when we were doing publishing. So mm -hmm. for, for us, it was always the most important to know the, the, the target player. Right? Yes. Who, yes. Are the tar who is the target audience You're right. we, we are trying to Actually, get I with the game. Have this chart. Yeah. It's for, like, we know, for example, the, those, that kind of game. Uh, yeah, that genre, mm -hmm. uh, many female players. Mm -hmm. And age was between uh, mostly between uh, teens, 
to okay. up to like early 30. <laughs> so those would be the main players mm -hmm. because uh, I guess it's more casual, more casual kind of a game and it's story based and things like that. So that's something that we thought, oh, that, that I thought, oh, that's something I would want to capture. <laughs> and you're right, that's, that's important, the audience. Yeah, so you mean, mean kind of, I'm just trying to come finish from, you, from your sentence. Yeah, yeah. It's like we would look first for the audience. Yes. Right? Where is our audience? Mm -hmm. Like you, you mentioned, female, male based. Yes. Um, maybe we would try a couple of keywords. Mm -hmm. We would yes. see, uh, usually run a hundred dollars campaign yes. on Facebook mm -hmm. just for visiting a website or visiting some yeah. landing page yeah. that's related to that game and see the uh -huh. response. Yeah. Right? See how many users are eager to like that page mm -hmm. or to share that page or leave the comment or just reach out to ask like, hey, when this game is coming out? Yes. And we, we would use this kind of method before we even start developing the game mm -hmm. <clears throat> to see just what is the cost of user acquisition. Yes. Uh, and um, we would also look for um, the, the category, what's the usual retention in the category. For example, we've discovered that yes, multiplayer, online games, you take a lot of time consumed for the, for the players, mm -hmm. but puzzle games, which are 100 times cheaper to, to make, which require a good level designer, have in some cases even bigger user retention. So mm -hmm. if you have a good puzzle game, uh, uh, there is a group of people who is willing to play that game for hours every day. Mm -hmm. right? And if you have good uh, uh, levels and the, the difficulty level is increasing mm -hmm. and uh, you have a business model who is working with this puzzle, yeah. puzzle game, you're on to something with this puzzle game. So, so we did a lot of testing on this side and mm -hmm. I, I just think from what you said, that, that's super close to just what we did mm -hmm. and how we did. That's actually the next step that, we, that uh -huh. I would suggest that uh, we do before we start. Mm -hmm. uh, developing, as you said, because all that was just research and then all the information gathering and analysis about okay, those are potential that those are potential games that we could kind of refer to and then make. Mm -hmm. And then the next step, you're right, like we have to test, test it out, uh, find out how the users would respond to those kind of like uh, keywords, as you said, and uh, what is the interest that the users mm -hmm. may have. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, now from some uh, uh, business more related question mm -hmm. I have is, um, for example, did your company ever uh, join some uh, joint venture for a single game, whether it's co-development and then mm -hmm. looking for multiple publishers? Uh, do you work with the different people around uh, for localization, for local marketing efforts? Mm -hmm. Did you do yourself publishing? And in that regard, you, you can share with uh, with us. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. some people who are watching this show are uh, mm -hmm. both developers, publishers, mm -hmm. people who do international localization. They are all interested in different kinds of collaborations and different kinds of business opportunities. Yes. Do you guys did something in that regard? Actually, I feel that uh, the current company I'm with uh, has been more or less conservative. It, it mm -hmm. has been more conservative than probably the other companies yeah. in terms of like trying new things mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as I said we've been more focused on the domestic market because that's what the, uh, the boss knows more better right mm -hmm. he feels more comfortable because he, he's a right, Chinese yeah by himself Chinese player right he can yeah. feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. how the, the players Chinese players would feel right so he can gauge okay mm -hmm. how, how how well this game is made and uh, whether or not to like go on mm -hmm. on the project because uh, it's tough for a game developer, right? Like to really reach the end, like finish the game. Sometimes you, the game gets slashed, like <laughs> not just in the middle, like maybe a quarter gets made or even <laughs> one test get made or some 90% is made, but still like we feel, oh, it's not the right time or it's not whatever factors and we kill the game, right? So, yes. So, so really yeah, this is an interesting, interesting, you'll see guys, when we're talking to many game developers, uh, maybe let us not say 90, but 80% of the games get shut down before they're even available to the public. And would you agree to that? Yeah, I do. I do. And uh, earlier you mentioned about partnership, right? I feel that 
it would have helped like if we had a like trustworthy or a competent partner publisher who mm -hmm. could tell us okay this is what the market no not this is what the market needs now but in the future because mm -hmm. the game takes time to make right but the publishers when they they look for games they look for the current market mm -hmm. they look for games that are currently available for the current market mm -hmm. but for developers what's difficult is we have to think about what's going to be hot what's going to be popular in a year from in now in a year or two right yes. because of depending on the types of games like rpgs take maybe like mm -hmm. two years but casual games maybe like half a year or even a couple of months then they, they can come out right but some like bigger games hardcore games and take time right um while I was talking about this, because we, in one of the previous videos, I, I was talking about mm -hmm. how the gaming industry is transforming completely mm -hmm. going forward compared to 10 years ago and mm -hmm. today compared to probably a year from now when we get Google Stadia and other uh, new gaming services. But uh, while I was talking, the, one of the previous shows is based on different uh, interview with different people is I'm seeing the future where uh, couple of developers are going to group together mm -hmm. to make a game and they're going to group with a couple of publishers yes. to publish the game in different regions. For example, there is a group of developers and a publisher somewhere in Europe mm -hmm. who are looking to do something in China. Yes. Right? And there is some group of people in China who is also looking to do both developer and publisher who is looking to do something in Europe. Yes. And the, the, the mixture, if some somehow is going to be some mixture where they can both let's say have a joint project where you, you can make a game that's uh, going to involve both cultures mm -hmm. and uh, have something going on and you have publishers who are willing to support that kind of game that's backed up by a good business model is a potential uh, uh, project I think everybody would feel exciting to work on yeah that's that's why, uh, so we've been conservative up to maybe like last year or two years ago when the boss thought, hey, uh, we've been uh, relying on Tencent too much. So we haven't built a strong enough marketing, internal marketing team, right? For user acquisition or for organic base, right? Mm -hmm. so, so then he decided, oh, let's, let's build a, let's found a publishing company but still mm -hmm. focus on the domestic market. Mm -hmm. So he went to Guang Guangzhou to the south mm -hmm. and then he founded his own <laughs> publishing company, right? Yeah. Because uh, like Tencent or the big publishers, they, they're becoming like more and more demanding and it's difficult to uh, uh, to really get keep out games. Keep up the demands. Yeah, keep up, like get, get our games to get to them, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so publishing, that's the first step, right? We, we started with publishing uh, so it's actually a different company separate mm -hmm. company sister company mm -hmm. uh, so that's as you said too so that it completes like the the lack of okay mm -hmm. knowing the market and and, and uh, marketing and stuff like that and the other thing is uh, this year uh, last year uh, we also started with uh, customization for example mm -hmm. we we uh, look for a studio for a certain kind of game, for example, strategy game, mm -hmm. and they're good at it. So, hey, how, how about you make a game uh, for us, right? Mm -hmm. We cust customize, custom made. Mm -hmm. kind of. So that's something like a partnership we, we tried. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another one is a uh, publisher came mm -hmm. to us said, hey, you have a nice game that did very well. Um, how about you modify it, customize it to the, the, the way they want, like a different mm -hmm. genre, kind mm -hmm. of and different theme right uh, same genre sorry different theme mm -hmm. right it's kind of like reskin re but actually mm -hmm. it's more than reskin because we changed a lot yeah well uh, the, so. what what most people know in the reskin mm -hmm. uh, business actually mm -hmm. is that um you get to do something because reskinning is, is a big thing i we have seen blizzard <laughs> reskin the game in more <laughs> right? we, the whole yeah. world saw that um so um the, the reskinning of the game sometimes can bring a lot of fruits because you basically already had the working model just mm -hmm. the team you were you did is not the one that's drive the traffic mm -hmm. i'm taking an example of a racing game where instead of racing cars you're racing uh, 
scooters or yeah. you're racing spaceships mm -hmm. with literally similar functionality yeah, just similar the, the, the design could be something that is driving users to play more and uh, enjoy more and then you would learn from them what are the features they want to have in the game yeah yeah because graphics may be different and things that you collect right if mm -hmm. it's card based then those are different as well so you will have different different uh, niche audience i would say mm -hmm. right so that's your target different uh, different markets basically right mm -hmm. Completely agree. Mm -hmm. uh, on the on the monetization side, uh, we also had here talked in, in one show is um, our monetization strategies have changed in the last couple of years a lot. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any idea what strategies are you looking for? Is it more um, pay to play? Is it more some subscription, in app goods or ads? What is your guys' preferable uh, going for model? Uh, to the company, I think, uh, well, or to Chinese companies, the, the, the model that makes, of course, the most profit, most profits would be uh, free to play mm -hmm. and with in-app purchases where you offer and also a game uh, based on the, it's called a gacha system, right? Mm -hmm. Where you, you draw for things, you have mm -hmm. a probability. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of a game gambling. A yeah, bit, game right? gambling because for goods. Love, Chinese people love right gambling. Yeah. Right? And so, uh, so that's that's the model that has worked for many years, right? And mm -hmm. that's made the like, companies very successful, like Zep Tencent, NetEase, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something still we would pursue, but we would also look for a different revenue stream. Like, I've been kind of like internally in our company uh, advocate for hey why not try of course it depends on the game genre like because our games have been like hardcore midcore mostly mm -hmm. so it wasn't uh, appropriate to add um, ad monetization mm -hmm. but I, I'm pushing for that like as the games that we develop the new games that we develop they become more and more casual mm -hmm. so I'm introducing them asking them hey can you add that because that's what the market, the, the, the players need. They, they, the players sometimes are asking for that. I can see some of the, um, some mm -hmm. game forums, some, some players, when they discuss about the games, they would be like, hey, we're willing to, like, if you just give us an option, right? We're willing to look at, uh, watch the ad, and then mm -hmm. get just, like, for example, one diamond or two, one gem mm -hmm. or two, and just, just spending, like, a couple of seconds, right? Like, maybe, like, 30 seconds to a minute. Mm -hmm. per ad but they get something in return and reward ads right yeah reward ads right and that's something i i, I want to try like mm -hmm. for our companies for our new games that we're going to develop and uh also maybe passes like mm -hmm. subscriptions that's something that i want to also explore uh mm -hmm. based on of course the new games that we develop if they're a good fit then yeah we're going to implement that well, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, trying everything new. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm always uh, eager to try something new because uh, you never know what, what is going to work. And I'm mm -hmm. really much, I'm, I'm very focused to be data driven. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, there is some idea, there is something going on. Mm -hmm. It's new, it may be not make many sense at first, mm -hmm. but if you try a little bit of the sample, you can see some results. Yeah. and then compare them to the ones you have and traditional ones mm -hmm. and you can see where they are on the scale yeah. and uh, then with maybe proper modification mm -hmm. something new could be working even better than the old ones yeah and mm -hmm. i'm always trying to be on the forefront of trying these new things quickly yeah. very quickly and uh, seeing the results if the results are good I'm going to be the first one to, to talk about it and let everybody know that there is something good cooking, right? Yes, yes. That's uh, absolute, like, every, I think every game developer has to be, try to be innovative, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how, that's how it's going to make your product stand out from the crowd, right? Otherwise, if everything is the same, then why would the player choose yours uh, instead of the others, right? So that's, that's something I, I definitely agree with is we have to always look for new ways to do things innovative gameplay innovative uh rewards and things like that like because players like myself what why do i play games is really for 
pastime, right? Uh, as a hobby and uh, just to not just to kill time, but also to have fun because you know work is so tiring, right? Mm -hmm. When I play games, I, I'm more relaxed, and also sometimes I I love uh, games that are really um, visually. Uh, how do I say visually uh, joyful, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy like the, the graphics, enjoy the sound. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I want uh, the developers to pay more attention. Would right? you would you consider to be more like a single player mode or mm -hmm. multiplayer mode? Would you rather grab a game that you can play with everybody else, or you would go single mode, just you and the game, and you play? Uh, it depends on the, I guess it depends on the, on the mood. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if I, I if I feel like I, I want some quiet time, then yeah, uh, single player mostly. Uh, but uh, but you will find that sometimes uh, multiplayer PVP it also adds the, to the fun, mm -hmm. right? Especially like uh, uh, I played it for a while, uh, uh, Army of Kings. Tencent, mm. uh, Wang Zhirongyao, yeah. and it's really fun um, uh, to, the, other than playing just with NPCs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's completely different because it's teamwork, right? Yes. Really, you have to, okay, uh, about positions, about timing, and things like that. So work together, basically, right? Like other games as well, like RPGs as well. Like if you are uh, a mage, oh, okay, you have like strong yeah. attack power for example right but if you are uh, for example uh, uh, what is that uh, if you cure you can cure people okay. right healer, healer right yeah. healer for yeah. example role then oh uh, you're important right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you cannot be killed right yeah, yeah. so these are the things that are making the game like more fun that I find like other than if you're just yourself then you cannot experience that like mm -hmm. there's the social aspect in games uh, why nowadays Fortnite is so Popular. popular right mm -hmm. PUBG and because the interactions among people right? and mm -hmm. there's there are things to talk about right oh this guy did this and that guy did mm -hmm. that and oh we had a great teamwork of these those are all the social aspects that I think uh, would stay like, stay for sure in mm -hmm. in the games and for people to enjoy as well so that's why I said both I enjoy both it depends on the mood like of the day or <laughs> the time yeah, of the day yeah, right awesome. well, like for example Late in the night, of course, I would play by myself, like because no one probably is online mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time, right? Uh, and so, but uh, during gathering, friends gathering, then yeah, you would play with with friends. It's like inviting friends to your house and mm. have like a Mario Kart game. Hey, let's race together, right? Yeah. So it's more fun. <laughs> cool, cool. So the um, lucky for friend, what would you? Um, what kind of resources would you like? Is there anything you're looking for that anybody can reach out to you, ask for whether it's advice or with any kind of... You have LinkedIn, right? Yes. Yeah, we can leave the, the description if anybody's mm -hmm. uh, interested in reaching out to you directly. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything you are specifically like looking for, whether it can be from HR to anything you, you guys need? Uh, well, I, I guess... Uh... And except a good good game designer, right? That's everybody made this one. Exactly, good games. I guess everyone looks is looking for good games uh, nowadays. So meaning good designers, things like that. That's the most important thing. Like, even though you are like very like guru marketer marketer, right? Or you know everything about publishing, but the. If you don't have a good game, a crappy game, you can't make it like yeah, still good, like <laughs> good products is everything, right? Yeah, so the key is the good product. Yeah, everyone is looking for that. Um, but uh, I want to also uh, earlier um, there was a time I I was hoping that the company that I'm with uh, um, forms a overseas de department. overseas publishing department. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so that's why I. I I, there was a time I did go out and then talk to people and then look for people who may be interested to hey let's maybe start a uh, publishing business in within mm -hmm. the company uh, it may not be with the same company it may mm -hmm. be like yeah maybe like you yeah. guys or yeah. you would have a different entity right yeah, 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 yeah. and do some different business uh, mm -hmm. right so that's something that I, I was looking for like hey maybe like have something some people in marketing mm -hmm. user acquisition 
uh, community management, mm -hmm. uh, like also uh, organic like uh, uh, maintenance, right? Like mm -hmm. for example, writing articles, right? Writing stuff, right? Uh, so that was something that, that I, did. I was looking for talents, yes. as I mentioned to yeah. you earlier, looking for talents. And then the other thing was products. I think products is the main, most important thing is look at more products, most, most products as possible. Um, anything in the market or not in the market yet, what's, what people are doing, what, what are people doing, what are they creating, uh, and be just up to, up to speed, I guess, yeah. myself, just, just to keep up with the trends. I guess go to different shows like GDC, mm -hmm. for example, and uh, China Joy. China Joy, yes, that you guys are right yeah, <laughs> represent yeah. representing, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, those would really help for uh, anyone, I guess. Mm. Really, anyone in any any aspect. Like if you do localization, then oh, localization, but for oh, what kind of games? Um, there are so many different kinds of games, and uh, recently I heard also from a friend who's in the localization business that there is research involved actually when you do localization. Sometimes when you it, different culture, different um, really different uh, words, there's a background into it, mm -hmm. a history into it. So you have to do some research when it's not just straight word-to-word -word translation sometimes <laughs> <laughs> many companies do just word-to-word -word. that's why mm -hmm. we as enjoy our partner we have partnership mm -hmm. with uh, people you know, in many countries mm -hmm. to provide the really localized localization yes i mean it's a local company mm -hmm. who can do a little bit of marketing mm -hmm. who can do maybe customer support who can do a good translation and localization yeah, who can like really assets right? yeah who, who can introduce a, a good um uh, user acquisition campaigns, yeah. uh, uh, marketing channels mm -hmm. locally, right? So we are looking into this kind of... Actually, thing. I think that would uh, really help. Instead of, for example, us thinking about having an internal publishing team, if we did find someone like a, or a group that would merge all these services together like as, a, as a package yes, and say, hey, uh, we have this package, you want to go overseas? Okay, we have this package, uh -huh. we can take care, not really all take care, but we can assist you with, uh, let's say, marketing, localization, and then uh, afterwards operations, and all that kind of, those steps, then really, I would be willing to, like, just, it's just about spending money and then taking the time about communication. I think, mm -hmm. again, about partnership, building the trust, like, about how you work and how we work, make sure that we or in sync, yes. right? So that's that's something really I would consider. Yeah. Right. We, well, that that's one part of that is what we are trying to do here. Mm -hmm. Is we, we are trying to group the good people with good services mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. so we can offer yes. uh, to uh, someone uh, like one stop boutique kind of solution, mm -hmm. uh, direct uh, speed up the communication. Yes. And basically stand like a, some kind of um, guarantee for mm -hmm. certain work that's that's going to be done. because it does take a lot of different talents, right? For example, when when from what I learned, even though I never did like publishing by myself, but from what I learned, publishing you have to different channels. For example, right? You have to manage Facebook, you have to manage Google, mm -hmm. right? So you need to do those people, right? Uh, yes, really. Uh, those talents to be able to like really work properly and get your products running properly, promote it properly, and then the other thing is uh, know the market, right? Community community management. Like for for example, I do know there are some products, some Chinese made games that are poorly uh, translated. First of all, but poorly. Um, uh, Basically, they were, they were, with uh, the communication with the players are not done properly, for example. In right? many ways, from what I know, <laughs> many ways they have they were choosing the cheapest services when going outside, expecting they are going to achieve some really good result. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, in many ways, it happened that uh, the, the localization company didn't do the, the, the 
the work needs to be done or mm -hmm. translation have failed in many ways mm -hmm. and the, the games are actually not localized they're just translated yeah. in some ways yeah mm -hmm. so those things can be prevented mm -hmm. uh, it's not about uh, it's not money wise it's mainly i guess for for finding spending the right amount but also getting the good qual the quality, proper quality, quality right yeah. <laughs> yeah. cool cool Lucky, I'm sorry if you have been here with us. Lucky from Yoshi, 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 Gu, Yoshi Gu, right? Yoshi Gu. Yoshi Gu. Yoshi Gu. Yes. Yoshi Gu. Um, I'm sorry, my Chinese needs to be improved. <laughs> um, thank you guys all for watching. Uh, Lucky's link will be in the description. And I encourage you all to reach out to Lucky. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure Lucky will be answering you on uh, in the comments or something like that. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye, guys.